Hey there, pop kids! Have you ever had a chance to stand up for a friend? If you have, you know it takes both strong friendship and courage. Well, today's Bible story is a two for one. We'll get to see two stories of people standing up for a friend. Let's see if you can spot them. You'll have to watch and listen really closely. But don't worry, we've got our friendship finder right here to help us keep track. Keep your eye on that as we tell our story. Today's Bible story is about the time after the first Easter Sunday, when the disciples and their followers were traveling everywhere they could to tell people about Jesus. But believe it or not, not everybody was happy about people deciding to follow Jesus. The people in charge in Jerusalem didn't believe that Jesus had been the Son of God, and they did not want people following Jesus' instructions instead of theirs. So, um, <laughs> what did they do? Yikes! Yeah, that's right. They arrested anybody who was teaching about Jesus and threw them in prison. One of those leaders who was throwing people in jail was a man named Saul. Saul didn't like what he was hearing about that Jesus guy, so he decided to travel to a town called Damascus and arrest all the Jesus followers who lived there. Now, you can think of Saul as kind of like a bounty hunter, like Boba Fett from Star Wars. He was tough and persistent. He liked to work alone, and he had just one thing on his mind, tracking down the disciples who were teaching people about Jesus and getting them behind bars. Oh, not again. Hey, I'm the one telling this story. Thank you. He was really making life hard for Jesus' followers and making them live in hiding. But God had other plans for Saul. While Saul was on his way to Damascus, all of a sudden, he saw a bright light. Whoa! Like that. No, it wasn't the sun, not a meteor, not even a UFO. It was the light of God's glory shining from heaven. And from the light, he heard the voice of Jesus himself. Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, replied. I'm the one you're opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you'll be told what you must do. Wow! Right after this happened, Saul realized that he couldn't see anything. And it's no surprise, staring right into that light from heaven must have been like staring into the sun, which as you know, is not safe for our eyes. Saul's travel companions had to lead him into the city and he didn't eat or drink anything for three days. <sighs> he was just too shaken up by the incredible things he had just seen and heard. I mean, Jesus had spoken to him from heaven. <laughs> and that's when Saul's story changed forever. There in Damascus, Saul met someone named Ananias. Now Ananias was a follower of Jesus who lived in Damascus. And obviously, that was a dangerous place for a Jesus follower to be with somebody like Saul on the way. I mean, I personally would prefer not to go to jail so if I were Ananias, I might have gotten out of town for a few days, or at least laid low at home with my favorite books and some hot cocoa until Saul moved on. But get this, Jesus also spoke to Ananias and asked him to go and help Saul. Here's what that might have sounded like. Ananias, I need you to go out and help Saul. Saul has seen a vision in which someone came and placed their hands on his eyes, and Saul was healed so he could see again. And guess what? It's going to come true. And that healer is going to be you, Ananias. So can you believe it? He got up, left his cozy home, and off he went to find that nasty guy, Saul. Remember, Saul had a reputation for locking up people like him. And I can definitely imagine Ananias saying, no way I'm helping that guy. But Jesus spoke to him and stood up for Saul. Jesus said, trust me, this Saul guy is worth taking a chance on. Go help him out. So Ananias put on his sandals and went out to find Saul. When he found him, he placed his hands on Saul just like the vision had shown. And then Saul could see again. And surprise, surprise, Saul did not arrest Ananias. In fact, he got up, said thank you, and became a believer in Jesus. He even got baptized and began to preach about Jesus in the synagogues. Ta 
talk about seeing the light and changing your ways. Saul did a total 180 with his behavior, and that's the kind of amazing thing that can happen when you stand up for a friend. Now, Saul went back to Jerusalem, but as you can guess, when he got back there, the disciples there definitely didn't trust him. After all, the last time they saw him, he was busy throwing their friends in jail. <sighs> well, when he walked back into town and offered to help the disciples instead of arresting them, I bet they peeked out of their hiding spots and said, nice try, but you're not gonna trick us. I am not going to jail today. But that is when Barnabas stepped in to help. Barnabas was a friend of the disciples and a new friend of our buddy Saul. He told the disciples the story of what had happened to Saul in Damascus and convinced them to give his friend a second chance. There it was! It can't have been easy, but it worked. Saul was accepted by his new friends in Jerusalem and ended up doing a ton of work to help share Jesus' story with people all over the world. And it was all because his new friends, Jesus and Barnabas, stood up for him when it really mattered. This story shows us that when friends stand up for one another, it can change everything. For you, for your friend, and just maybe for everyone around you too. There may be times in your life when you can choose to stand up for a friend. And when that happens, I hope you'll remember Saul and how much friendship can change things and people for the better. Oh, come on!